Good day Sun Lakes, it's time for the news from the board, with your master board representatives, Bob Walter and Randy Robbins. Welcome to the March update from the board. I'm Bob Walter, President of HOA, and with me is the Vice President. I'm Randy Robbins. We're going to be going over some uh, uh, projects and, and events and different things that the board has been doing and plans to be doing. So uh, I'll start and then uh, Randy will, will jump in. The, the elections, that's the main thing right now. The ballots are being mailed out on uh, March the 10th. Um, they must be returned and completed uh, uh, sufficiently by April the 12th. That's when they're going to tabulate all the votes and determine what three candidates have won. Uh, there's three positions, two for two years, and the third one gets a one-year one term. The, uh, every year, what happens basically during, during election time, various rumors come out concerning the, uh, uh, you know, what's happening or what the problems are. And I just want to let you know that uh, uh, some of the election rumors are uh, uh, un unfounded. You know, the, uh, we're very, very solid financially. According to Ron Varner, our treasurer, uh, we're very, very sound financially. Last year, we were 259000 better than budget. Um, the uh, reserves and the CIP spending was 704000 less than budget. Uh, so we're, we're in very, very good shape. The uh, only, every department was uh, under budget except uh, food and beverage. And so what we've done is we have a group, <clears throat> and Randy will be talking about that a little later on, we have a group that's uh, doing an analysis and an audit of the food and beverage department to come up with uh, you know, some recommendations as to how to uh, reduce the losses. You know, I've lived here for 20 years, and, and every year for the 20 years, uh, we've had uh, losses in, in the restaurant. Um, we're, we're attempting to uh, remedy that, and attempting to lower that, but it might be something that we just have to eventually accept some, you know, not, not the rate that they are right now, but, you know, some, some losses and, and view it as, as an amenity. The, um, uh, concerning the elections, uh, we're going to show you what a ballot looks like. And uh, the, uh, uh, after they're mailed out to you, uh, Look over the uh, information from the, you know, the five candidates. Uh, use black or blue ink. Please see the back of the ballot for complete ballot instructions. Make sure that you're completing, or if you're not completing them properly, and if you don't sign it properly, it, it won't count. Um, there's two, uh, two envelopes. Uh, the, the first one uh, is a, a secret ballot envelope number one uh, that you fill out with the ballot, put it in. Uh, and then number two is pre-printed with your name and address. Make sure the address is correct, and then sign that one. Go ahead and, and mail, mail those in to the uh, 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 inspector of elections, and uh, they'll be tabulating, and we'll, we'll find out on the uh, April the 12th. If you have any questions concerning that, uh, please contact uh, Tammy, uh, Tammy Morgan. She's our executive secretary, and uh, if you mess it up, you know she might be able to get you, uh, you know, a, a new a new ballot. But it's very important that you that you vote. Next on the on the agenda is the waterfalls. Good news, the uh, city council uh, changed the level two water restrictions. They removed the ones concerning our waterfalls. We can now turn them back on. Uh, as of the 14th of February, the problem is the. Uh, we can't just turn the switch and turn them on. You know, they've been inoperable for nine months. They're in need of repairs or, or replacement in some, some instances. And so what we're doing right now is we're getting some quotes and deciding which route to go, you know, repair or totally replace. But uh, this board is committed to getting them back on. And within a few months, uh, I'm certain that they'll be back on. Uh, matter of fact, we'll be showing you a picture here of what they uh, look like in the past and, uh, you know, that's. That's our signature, you know, for Sun Lakes, you know, the beautiful waterfalls, and we're going to make sure that both gates, you know, are, are going to be uh, back on and operating. We're going to do gate one first, and then gate two. Next is surveys. We did surveys this past month uh, with the help of uh, Ajit. Ajit uh, developed a survey and uh, tabulated it, and the 
uh, district delegates uh, sent it out with their newsletter and, and was very instrumental in getting the information back. So here, here are the results. We had 1,049 valid responses, which is pretty good uh, for, you know, for a survey here. 62% were in favor of a dog park, 38 not. Of the 38 that were not in favor, 27% were in favor if the dog owners took the liability and paid for everything and took HOA off, off the hook. Uh, the other main one is the uh, favor of the lounge, 84%, significant, significant uh, majority there, uh, were in favor of lounge expansion. Now, we're not bound by this survey, but we wanted to do it to get uh, input from membership to figure out what you, know, what you wanted and what your preferences were. So we'll be making decisions on both of those in the very near future. We're gonna be doing a town hall on April the 19th, uh, three o'clock in the ballroom. The town hall was in reference to lounge expansion. So uh, I'll make sure if you're uh, around to you know, show up for that and we'll give you some, uh, some information before we, before we move on. Um, I know we've been very patient with some of the projects here. You know, they've been uh, slow in, in uh, fruition, uh, fro uh, very slow in completing, uh, and it's basically due to, you know, weather, manufacturing uh, problems, and I uh, just want to let you know that some of them are now finally getting, uh, getting done. An example is the pickleball courts. I think we can show you uh, a, a slide of the pickleball courts. They look beautiful, red, white, and blue. Uh, they were just finished just uh, a couple of days ago, and uh, you know, they're, they're state of the art. Uh, it's going to be great for our uh, uh, members here to uh, to use it, and also I think it's great for the, uh, the overall value of our property. Pickleball is one of the you know biggest growing sports, and when someone's looking to uh, you know move into a community, they're going to say, well, you know what what kind of amenities do you have? And we'll show them our brand new pickleball courts. So I'm looking forward to that. In addition to that, you know, the carpeting. The carpeting is finely manufactured. It's, it, it's in a route, and we're now scheduled. Of course, this is the third time we've scheduled it. <clears throat> we're scheduled for the 25th of this month to be putting in the, uh, <clears throat> uh, the new, new carpeting. Uh, we have a dehumidifier in the south indoor uh, uh, pool. Uh, it's been uh, in bad shape for a long time, way, way overdue, and we're gonna be uh, be replacing that, so I'm look, looking forward to that. Um, recently, the uh, came to our attention that the many of the dogs were running and not being properly leashed in violation of not only our CNRs but also the state law. So, as of the 27th of uh, last month, the Securitas is now enforcing the leash laws. So, be uh, be aware of the fact that uh, you know make sure that if you're out walking your dog that you, you, know, you, you have them on a leash. <clears throat> Business Expo is coming up uh, on April the 4th from 5 to 8 in our ballroom. And uh, basically we're gonna have a uh, uh, showcasing the major businesses here in Banning. We wanna build a better relationship and support the business community here, at, here in Banning. So please come out. There's gonna be door prizes, refreshments, and I think it'll be uh, you know, a great, uh, great time for all. Um, one last thing is that uh, we've been having issues with people speeding. We had recently had someone seriously injured, and uh, uh, we have tasked our safety committee to come up with a community safety assessment, and we're going to look at their recommendations and make some, uh, make some changes in reference to that. One of the things that we're doing is we're having a uh, uh, breakfast with the city officials on the uh, 21st to uh, go over a possible MOU, Memorandum of Understanding, to see whether or not we can have them periodically patrol our community and, and uh, make sure that uh, people are not running the stop signs and, and speeding and, and causing uh, safety issues here for, for our members. And now Randy's gonna uh, go ahead and, and uh, take it from here, talking about, I believe, the uh, Master Plan Initiative. Yep. Hi, Bob, thank you. Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. Uh, uh, before I get to the master plan uh, initiative, I want to just discuss a few things, other things that are going on in the community right now. The uh, main ballroom uh, roof uh, was leaking, and so we had to do an emergency repair on that. That is in progress as we speak. 
Um, at the same time, the sand wedge skylights have been leaking off and on for years. They've tried temporary fixes for many times, uh, and and it's they finally are to the point that they had to be uh, it had to be fully addressed. So the decision that was made was to remove the skylight, which you cannot actually see from inside the sand wedge. You have fluorescent lights and diffusers uh, inside there. So the decision was made to remove the skylights completely because it's a very difficult, um, almost anywhere you always have, you have skylights, you often have leaks. It, uh, any, anybody in construction has known that for years. Uh, there are so many different seams and so forth. So we're working on that. We're gonna put in a more traditional ceiling with the modern LED lighting rather than the uh, old school fluorescents and diffusers. So we're looking forward to that. In addition, in the sand wedge, um, we're converting the two bathrooms to, uh, I guess I'm not sure if it's politically correct, but I'm gonna say it, unisex bathrooms. And uh, we expect the sand wedge to be closed between four to six weeks. That uh, closed on the 5th of March. So hopefully uh, mid-April at the latest, we will back, the sand wedge will be back open. So, and then we can use it for obviously breakfast, but also for meetings and special private events as we have in the past. Uh, the master plan initiative. Uh, the board has worked with specifically uh, three key people that have been working on it, and that's uh, Mr. Bob Hicks, Steve Von Reich, and Ron Varner. Uh, the master plan, many of you have heard about it already, I assume, or I hope. Uh, we've started with key committee members and committee chairs and our goal on the master plan is to create a document, what I like to refer to as a living document, but it's a document that we would have a whole plan on what we're going to do um, moving forward. Each board, of course, can always make some adjustments to it. Uh, that's the question that always comes up. Can, can't each board do it? Yes, they can, but hopefully this will give them the map for uh, a well thought out process of where we want to head. Uh, we are in the process of interviewing a consultant to help us that has done this with HOAs all over California and, and all over the West actually. And so we have a meeting later on this week uh, with this consultant or an interview process quite frankly. And we'll, we'll go from there and we'll keep, you, keep the community posted. But we think this, as a board, we feel this is a very uh, very integral part, as, as I've been fond of saying, for the next 35 years of Sun Lakes Country Club. Uh, so that, that's what the master plan is. And if you have any questions on that, feel free to reach out to any of the board members. We're all, we're all, uh, we're all in on this, and we, we really want to see this happen. Uh, this will help everybody, including the management team, as well as this board and future boards. Uh, as Bob mentioned, the food and beverage analysis group has been working for a few months now, auditing, uh, understanding procedures, understanding costs of so forth with, with regards to the food and beverage department. The, we have always, as Bob noted, we have always run at a uh, deficit and there's a sub subsidy. It's something I like to call uh, an operational amenity. It's not something you just spend money on. You have revenue, but you also spend money. Uh, our tennis courts are, would not be an operational amenity, as an example. That would be something that you just put to, you, we just, we do spend money on. And that's, that's part of what an amenity is in a uh, community, in a country club like we have here. And so we, our goal is to minimize that subsidy that the food and beverage has done. And quite frankly, it has run above run above the budgeted subsidies in the last couple of years. So we're, we're working really hard to get to that. The management team, uh, Chris Mitchell and his team have been working very closely with us on this. And our goal is to uh, lower these sub any potential subsidies that we might have in the food and beverage department. So, uh, and that goes along with the lounge expansion. The lounge operations historically have run at a a uh, non-deficit, I don't like to use the word profit because we're not a profit center per se, uh, but the, the lounge itself has run at a non-deficit and that's our, our intent again, so we don't have to subsidize both the lounge and the restaurant, but as a, and, and 
banquets as well. So that's our that's our plan on there. So uh, you'll you'll see a report hopefully at the uh, March 22nd open session meeting. You'll see another report. It may be a still in progress, not finalized, but you'll definitely see a progress report on that. Uh, let's see what else do I have here on my list. The master plan. One other thing I want to just I just want to stay uh, reiterate the safety. Uh, the safety committee, as Bob said, is going to be handling uh, an assessment for us, and we we have had a couple injuries. We've had a lot of speeding. We've had a couple accidents. And quite frankly, we just need to pay attention to what we're doing, slow down what we're doing, and um, we just don't want anybody in the community getting hurt. That's our biggest, uh, one of our biggest concerns. And then just a, a, with regards to the warehouse across the street, the past action group uh, will be filing the reply brief, which is the final of the three briefs involved in the case on March 9th, which is just a couple days from now that will be filed and then hopefully the judge will schedule some a hearing on that in April or May and we'll get a resolution uh, one way or the other in the in the near future and um, between the past action group and the board of directors uh, it, we will keep you informed and uh, I think I covered everything on on the list here and uh, is there anything else you wanted to add Bob? Yeah the, the main thing is we still need donations I mean, you know, there, there's still cost involved. We don't know if we have to, uh, you know, appeal this matter or not. So uh, we want to thank uh, Dory for mm -hmm. everything that she's been doing and, and collecting uh, all, all the bottles and and, uh, and everything. And uh, uh, it remains to be seen as to what's going to happen. It's it's in the hands of the court right now. So uh, pass action. The president will will keep you uh, keep you advised as to the the progress on that. Uh, there is just a couple couple other things is that the uh, uh, on the expansion of the lounge essentially uh, over, over time we have historically lost a lot of money in the restaurant and always made money in the lounge so it, it makes sense to expand the lounge and, and have more people in the lounge and the profit center and reduce some of the losses uh, e even uh, uh, Dan who has passed away uh, was strongly in favor of this he told me they would According to his estimates, take about eight years to recoup the you know the, the cost of it, and and the cost is coming uh, not from the reserve and replacement. It's coming from the capital improvement fund, you know, and that's very important because uh, that's over two million dollars you know sitting there needed to do for capital improvements, and this would be one very important capital improvement. And, and then, uh, lastly, related to that, we have changed the. Uh, uh, and we added an additional day for the uh, uh, happy hour. Uh, years ago, Karen Clavelaw and myself uh, uh, had recommended it and started the, uh, the happy hour. Uh, uh, it was a lot of uh, touch and go with the board. They were, at that time, they were against it. We, we finally got it implemented about eight years ago. And, and now we found that it's very profitable, very, very uh, uh, popular. And so we want to expand that. So we're going to now start uh, as of the 15th. We're going to have it on the 8th excuse me, on the, on the 15th, we're going to have it on uh, Wednesdays and Thursdays. It was scheduled for the 8th, but it was now uh, uh, changed due to uh, menu, uh, menu changes. So it's going to be on the 15th, and it's going to be from 3.30 to 6, every Wednesday and every Thursday. So come out uh, and enjoy yourself, and don't forget to uh, uh, attend the, uh, the town hall on the 19th, and on our, our business expo, that's very, very important, the business expo is on the 4th, from five to eight in the main ballroom. Anything else that you would like uh, to? Just one last thing, one other thing in the community that's happening right now is the renovation of the fairway bunkers on holes one through nine of the championship course. Uh, our bunkers, as a year or so ago, we did the uh, greenside bunkers on all 18 holes on the championship course. Uh, those were very outdated. The drainage was outdated. Uh, we held, or the previous board, rightfully so, held off on the fairway bunkers at the time, and uh, now we've we've decided to start for this year. We're going to do nine holes. Hopefully, next year we'll be able to do another the final nine holes on the championship course. Uh, they were in very poor shape. One thing that that in our discussions on that, it was determined uh, that the maintenance to keep them in even quasi playable, as we've had for the last couple of years 
is we'll probably regain by saving a savings of maintenance. We're going to we're going to be able to uh, save some money in the long run, uh, even though we're making a, a one time expense to get them fixed because it, we will not have to maintain them nearly as much with the proper drainage, proper liners and quite frankly, proper sand. And uh, that's really all I've got, Bob. And, and remember that the um, uh, maintenance and the enhancement of the golf courses, uh, even if you're not a golfer, I mean, it uh, uh, supports the value of our properties. It makes our community what it is. You know, I mean, we're, we're a country club with, with two golf courses. It makes it, makes it beautiful. So uh, <clears throat> uh, even if you don't golf, uh, you know, please appreciate, uh, you know, the beauty of our uh, country club golf courses here. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody.